This first example problem is looking for the greatest horizontal displacement of a projectile. Now, they all land at the same height, so these are the problems that we've looked at before. And I told you in the lesson video that 45 degrees gives you the greatest horizontal displacement, which is true, but the velocities that they're launched at are not the same. So I think it's fairly obvious if we launch it faster, it will go further. These are both 20 meters per second, but this is at that middle range that gives you the greatest horizontal displacement. So the answer is three. So in this one, we have a ball rolling horizontally as it leaves the edge of a tabletop. So we have this ball and it's rolling along and it says it's 0.75 meters above the floor edge and it lands 0.391 seconds later on the ground. And the question is, what's the acceleration of the ball 0.2 seconds after it leaves the tabletop? So 0.2 seconds, that's going to put it in here somewhere. And basically they've given us all of this information about the time, about the velocity is three meters per second. But look at what the question is asking. What's the ball's acceleration? There is only one acceleration the acceleration due to the force of gravity, which is 9.8 meters per second squared. Okay, a projectile with mass m. Remember, mass does not affect the acceleration or any other velocity quantities when we're dealing with projectile problems. So a projectile with mass m is fired with an initial horizontal velocity vx from a height h above the level ground. What would give it greater time of flight? So we know it doesn't have to do with mass and decreasing the height, that would make it a shorter time. Increasing the horizontal velocity, if we made it go faster, it would go further, but the time would remain the same. So the only thing we can do is increase the height. So we have a ball thrown with a velocity of 35 meters per second at an angle of 30 degrees above the horizontal. And it says, it ha which quantity has a magnitude of zero when the ball gets to its highest point in the trajectory? So the ball is going to go like this. And which quantity is zero when it gets to here? Well, we know the acceleration is 9.8 the entire time. So the acceleration is always 9.8, so it's never zero. We haven't learned about momentum yet, but momentum is mass times velocity, and it always has velocity, so that's never zero. And the horizontal component of the ball's velocity remains the same. As it's traveling along its trajectory, its x velocity remains the same. But the vertical component of the ball's velocity, that's the y velocity, when it gets to the top, it has no velocity in the y direction. So the answer is 4. The diagram below represents a ball projected horizontally from a cliff at 10 meters per second. So we've got this ball shot this way at 10 meters per second. And it travels the path shown and lands at time t, a distance d from the base of the cliff. So it does this, it lands over here. A second identical ball is projected at 20 meters per second. Now remember that the height of the cliff hasn't changed, so the time t isn't going to change. So let's just make up a number. Let's say time t is one second. Well, at 10 meters per second, this would go 10 meters. If we launch something at 20 meters per second, it would go 20 meters in one second. So what would happen to the distance if we made it go twice as fast? It would go twice as far. Okay, a ball is rolled twice across the same level laboratory table and allowed to roll off the table and strike the floor. In each trial, the time it takes the ball to travel to the edge of the, from the table to the floor is accurately measured. 
So in trial A, the ball is traveling at 2.5 meters per second when it reaches the edge of the table. So we have the ball, it's going 2.5 meters per second, and it strikes the floor 0.391 seconds after rolling off the edge. So it does this, and the time it takes is 0.391 seconds, and they want to know the height. That would be our dy. Well, remember, this is x information, and we want to know the height, which is y information. So we're just going to do a y down trip, and our information is viy is zero. Right here, it is moving in the x direction, but it has not started to fall in the y direction. So its initial velocity is zero. I'm going to call down to be positive. So our acceleration is down. Force of gravity is down, so our acceleration is down. So it's 9.8 meters per second squared. And we're looking for the distance, dy. And we also have the time, 0.391 seconds. So the easiest way to do this is bit plus 1 half at squared. And dy is what we're looking for. Um, vit is going to drop out to zero. So that leaves us with 1 half 9.8 meters per second squared times 0.391 seconds squared. And that distance comes out to about 0.75 meters. The second part of this question says, in trial B, the ball is traveling at five meters per second. So the second ball is traveling faster when it leaves the edge of the cliff. Compare the time it takes the ball to reach the floor in trial B to the time it took in trial A. Well, the height of the cliff hasn't changed, so the time hasn't changed. So the other ball will go further but it will take the same amount of time. So the answer to number seven is the same time. Number eight and nine. So we have a football and it's thrown at an angle of 30 degrees above the horizontal. The magnitude of the horizontal component of the ball's initial velocity is 13 meters per second. So the horizontal velocity is 13 meters per second and the vertical component is 7.5 meters per second. So the ball is launched off at this angle of 30 degrees, like this, and it's going to take that path right there. On the axes in your answer booklet, draw a graph representing the relationship between the horizontal displacement of the football and the time the football is in the air. So what's happening to the horizontal displacement? Well, the horizontal displacement is going up, but how is it going up? Well, we know that the x velocity, which is the 13, is constant. So the horizontal displacement is going to increase at a constant rate. So what does that look like? This, and actually the slope of that line would be equal to 13 meters per second, but they're not going to ask you to do that. The football is caught at the same height from which it was thrown. Calculate the total time that the football was in the air. So this one's actually a little hard. Um, <clears throat> we know that the initial velocity is 7.5 meters per second in the y direction. And the ball is going to go up, reach the top, and then come back down. So really, this is a problem where we have a ball thrown up at 7.5 meters per second. The ball is going to go up and come back down. So what information do we know? We know the initial velocity is 7.5 meters per second. That's the y information, and we're only doing a y trip here. I called that positive, so up is positive. My acceleration is down, 
So that's negative 9.8 meters per second squared. My VFY, that's how fast it's going when it gets over here. That's going to be the same as this, except down. So that's negative 7.5 meters per second. And what are we looking for? We're looking for time. So the easiest way to do this is VF equals VI plus AT. And we have negative 7.5 meters per second equals positive 7.5 meters per second plus negative 9.8 meters per second squared times t. And if you do that, I got a time of 1.5 seconds. Which combination of horizontal and vertical velocity will give us the greatest horizontal, horizontal range? So remember, the greatest horizontal range for a projectile is going to occur when it's at 45 degrees, but we don't have the same initial and horizontal components. So it's going to be the one that has the angle is 45 degrees, but also has the greatest x and y components. And you can see that this one right here is going to give us 45 degrees. And it also has much larger components than any of the other ones, so it has to be this one.